first Assassin's Creed was a bona fide genre buster. Mixing an open world design with parkour gameplay and an unpredictable story, it remains one of the great stories of this console generation. The second played it a little safe, but sanded the experience down to remove many of the imperfections. The fear with Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is that it continues the trend and fails to provide a creative spark. With a multiplayer component and building an army of assassins its keystones, are they enough to make you put out another hit on the series? <laughs> I don't understand. Please wait. I have so many questions. Picking up the moment after the second game ended, once again you take the virtual reins of assassin Ezio Auditore di Firenze as he takes up the ageless battle against the scheming Templars in the late 15th century. The coveted Apple of Eden has fallen into the hands of the evil Cesare, and he won't rest until all of Italy is under his foot. As the game begins, the villa you spent hours restoring in the second game falls under attack, but Cesare has bigger plans, and the focus quickly shifts to Rome, where a power struggle ensues. Ezio must navigate the muddy waters of friend or foe as he tries to stave off the attack. Once our enemies are dead, we can speak of vaults and gods and ancient places. With a lot of characters to keep track of, things can get a little messy and sometimes uninteresting. The cast of bad guys is a bit too fluid and bland as new villains materialize constantly without much context. Chiudi la bocca! Non speak ill of the Borgia! Things are further complicated by the other half of the dual story that takes place in the present day. What if I can't stop the visions? How long before I start painting symbols on the walls? Desmond Miles, a direct descendant of Ezio, goes into the virtual world of the Animus to relive Ezio's memories and uncover clues to the Templar's motivations. The storyline is explored a bit more here than in the prior two games, but not necessarily for the better. Desmond and his group of scientists come off like the cast of Scooby-Doo, and it feels out of place in the context of the larger plot. Did you miss me? No? Anyone? It's still a rather unique premise, and fans will be more than happy to follow the dangling carrot. Could one of you tell me what's going on? Newcomers will get a lot of mileage out of the video montages that help bring them up to speed. Who is Desmond? Where are these temples Minerva spoke of? Brotherhood is an open world game that has one primary story arc and plenty of distractions. The game does a great job of keeping you on the beaten path if you so choose, but there are guilds to develop, items to collect, and the entirety of Rome to revive. All the advancements from the second game have returned, like buying and maintaining armor or weapons and restoring properties. The latter was confined to Ezio's villa before, but now you're charged with rejuvenating the entirety of Rome. This essentially broke the game's economy before by providing you with more money than you knew what to do with, but it's much more balanced here. I will make money the least of their worries. Vision variety is always key in games like this, but minus a few unique tasks speckled throughout the game, you'll find yourself escorting allies, trailing people, and assassinating targets more often than not. You are here for Cesare and Rodrigo. This is not a short game, so by the time you cross the finish line, you'll be wishing for a little more variety. Brotherhood takes place primarily in one city, but it's absolutely huge. To help with navigation, you have Ezio's trusty steed and a series of tunnels that will allow you to warp once they've been discovered and unlocked. Be quick, fight. What are you doing? Saving you! With a war on his hands, Ezio needs as many allies as possible, and the underpinning is bolstered by a new assassin recruitment system. You'll find average citizens littered around the city interested in joining the cause. Once you rescue them, they become part of your army. It would be an honor to fight alongside you, signore. Utilizing a menu system, you can hire them for contracts that will net you coin and give you points to upgrade their armor and weapons. You'll grow attached to your little projects very quickly, which makes permanently losing them to a difficult contract all the more disappointing. The final component of the design is the new multiplayer mode. Built around the now standard leveling with perks and killstreaks motif, you're given a target to hunt while another player hunts you. It's not as simple as just killing each other. Bonus points are awarded for being as covert as possible, with the final point total determining the winner. There are four variations on this theme, including team-based options, but it all eventually feels like one note. You'll often spawn right next to your potential killer, and luck plays a little too big of a hand in the outcome, because sometimes there are far too many of the same character model in a given space. Even so, it initially feels fresh, and the perks do their best to even the playing field. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood isn't your typical action-adventure game. The campaign is quite lengthy, and there's an engaging multiplayer component to explore. Recruiting assassins to your cause becomes an addictive metagame, the economy is balanced despite its massive expansion, and you're given plenty of freedom in how you tackle the quest. Il piacere e meritato si consuma da sé. Reguiescat in pace. <laughs> Let's go!
The run anywhere climb anything parkour has returned with few tweaks. It's still exhilarating to run from rooftop to rooftop, and it's still frustrating when the precision is undermined by the need to automate. Combat still feels like an afterthought. Enemies stand around and take turns being dropped by counter kills, and those that are immune to them only require a kick or two before their defenses are broken. Linking kills between enemies has been smoothed out, but it only makes things easier. The most difficult element of the combat is managing the camera that often gets stuck behind level geometry. You would not believe the things I have seen, Mario. Then be sure to stay alive that I might hear of them. How you handle each mission feels a lot more rigid, and we found ourselves bogged down in trial and error a lot more than the prior two games, thanks to enemy placement that often forces you to uncover a predetermined path to your goal. Each mission objective is a special condition you must satisfy in order to achieve full synchronization, which does help in providing a different perspective on satisfying each task. Get it! Corner the rat! The map is still open by climbing to high perches and synchronizing the area, effectively taking it under your control and allowing you to restore the shops found there. The twist is that some towers feature a Borgia captain that has to be eliminated before scaling it and burning it to the ground. In Assassin's Creed 2, you spent a lot of time building and fiddling around with Da Vinci's inventions, but they've been pushed to the side here. Forgive me, the Borgia have commandeered my services. The result is far less variety, despite a slight uptick in turret play. At least the horse is a lot more functional now, allowing you to ride inside the city and be effective in combat while mounted. Recruiting other assassins is more than just a metagame. Using the left shoulder button, you can call your colleagues into action to help in dire situations or just as a distraction. The AI does an adequate job of handling things on its own, and there are some missions where having built a large army of minions can make all the difference. She called out to a phantom, this one, as if he were there, standing beside me. Now in its third installment, the sense of wonder has faded, leaving Brotherhood to stand on its own two feet. Tweaks to the combat failed to eliminate its most glaring flaw, and the changes to the horse gameplay have made it flashier, but marginally more useful. The one addition that does hit the mark is the inclusion of assassin support, but halfway through the game we started to tire of the miles of terrain to traverse and the repetitive missions. That's sad. That's life. Well, that's death, technically, but you take my point. The first Assassin's Creed was a looker, the second started to show the engine's age, and now the third looks downright dated at times. You condemn what you do not understand! Animation is still its forte, and the new batch of counter kills are both brutal and exhilarating. But textures and entire objects regularly draw in, and the frame rate jumps all over the place. Jump! At least there's no knocking the authenticity. This is about as close as you'll get to being able to explore a fully restored Rome in three dimensions. And we wouldn't be surprised if history teachers around the world use it to show their students what it really looked like. The voice acting is strong, and the script uses language effectively to convey some of its bigger moments. The orchestral music lays a nice bed for the atmosphere, and while Brotherhood regularly falls short on a technical level, the artistic vision does not disappoint. Bloody third world country! You're talking about Italy. No, Europe in general. It was initially thought that Assassin's Creed Brotherhood might be a multiplayer-focused game, but the campaign was an afterthought, but nothing could be farther from the truth. Just as lengthy and deeper than its predecessors, Ezio's latest adventure holds the line. Many of the gameplay issues have gone unchecked once again, but Assassin recruitment, development, and implementation is far more addictive than you might think. The multiplayer component definitely has its moments, but serious players will be turned off by how random it can be. For the series to remain elite, it will need to evolve, but for now, its unique premise and core gameplay are more than enough to make this Brotherhood one worth joining. It will be worth the wait, Ezio. Trust me.